lift up your name this morning. Above all things, above all else, above things we see, above things we know, above things we've experienced, about things we hope for, about things we pray for, above everything, oh God, that exists, we lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. We give you praise, oh God. All things are sustained by you. All things are under your power. All things are controlled by you. All things were made by you. All things are owned by you. You are God eternal. The King immortal. The King invisible. The only wise God. We praise you, oh God. By you and in you all. We give you praise, 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 we lift our voices to you. Almighty God, this is your worship, this is your song, this is your praise, the fruit of our lips. We give you honor this morning. I just want you to bask in his presence this morning. Just take a few seconds or minutes to just enjoy the comfort of his embrace. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and sing. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why, we'll just take. We love in our King. Do you love Him this morning? We love you, Jesus. We'll just tell them we're not crazy. We're just loving our King. We give you praise, oh God. With our hands lifted high to the sky When the world wanders wide Glory to Jesus We'll just say we're loving you Jesus Glory to God Do you love him this morning? Do you love him this morning? Yes. Oh, glory to God. Father, thank you for your word. We're going to read scripture together before we take a seat. Do you love him this morning? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. With our hands lifted high to the sky. There's a reason we do what we do. Revelations chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. The New King James Version. Revelations chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. Let's read together from verse 1. To the angel of the church at Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstand verse 2 I know your works your labor your patience 
and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. Verse 3. And you have preserved, sorry, persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my namesake, and have not become weary. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Verse 5. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Verse 6. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. I want us to read verse 7 really loud. Are you in church? Let's make it loud. He... Who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let's take that again. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Mm -hmm letters from Jesus. Father, speak to us today. Father, change us today. Father, transform us today. Give us a word that we'll run with for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Let's celebrate the gift of God, J-Tribe, and welcome everyone joining church online today. And perhaps wave at someone in church, welcome to church, good to see you. Fellowship is so much nicer when you show up. <laughs> it's good to see you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can't hear you, is it the weather? Praise the Lord. I can't hear you, are you cold this morning? Praise the Lord. Can someone give the Lord a big shout of hallelujah? No, that shout isn't big enough. Can you give him a big shout of hallelujah? Can you lift your hand and say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Today we're starting a series, Letters from Jesus. Letters from Jesus. Mm. In the book of Revelation, we find Jesus speaking to Apostle John and asking him to write letters to seven churches. Seven churches. You must understand that none of these churches received this letter in isolation. By that I mean all seven letters were published to all seven churches. So perhaps there's something in these letters for the church at Aja, for the church at the Oasis, for the church called RCCG Promised Land, and for the expression called Inspire. Are you in church today? Can you say God has a word for me? You have a letter, and this first letter is to the church at Ephesus. The church at Ephesus. You know the book of Ephesians? Is it Ephesians or Ephesians? What's the correct pronunciation? <laughs> Nigerian pronunciation is... Ephesians. What's the co okay? You know, our son has been correcting his dad and I quite a bit when we pronounce a word. He says, "No, that's not how to pronounce it." So we're having dinner, and my husband said, "Pass the salad." I was like, "No, Dad, it's salad." How many salad-speaking grammarians are in the house? <laughs> salad. And so to the church at Ephesus, the first of the seven letters, we're going to take time to go through the seven letters and understand why this message was so important that th this is the opening of the book of Revelation. Amen. Let's talk first about the church at Ephesus. What was it about this church? This church was planted by Apostle Paul during his second missionary journey. 
If you did see ROK like I did, you probably have heard about Paul's first missionary journey, second missionary journey. I mean, I grew up a pastor's kid, but I didn't like that part of CROK. It wasn't fun for me, was it for you? Because we had to memorize all the places he went to and understand the map. That wasn't easy. Mm. So this church was planted during Paul's second missionary journey, about 54 AD. And this church was watered by Paul, by Apollos, by um, Priscilla, Timothy, Aquila. They had teachers. The watering of a church refers to the teaching of the word. So you come to church, you hear the word, you're being watered. Remember, Apostle Paul said, Paul watered, sorry, Paul planted, Apollos watered. Who gave the increase? You need to come with me today. Today is a teaching session. Who gave the increase? God gave the increase. So the watering refers to the teaching of the word, discipling, right? And that was done by Paul, Apollos, Timothy, Priscilla, Aquila, just like in our days, right? As a church, we receive a lot of watering, don't we? Teaching of the word, and God has made it so that in our generation, you receive from your local church, you receive online, you receive on TV, you receive on radio. Everywhere you go, the word of God is abundant. Is that true? Are you in church? Is that true? Excellent. So the, the, the church at Ephesus is beginning to feel to me like the church at Aja. This city was known for its religion and its commerce. Commerce. Does that sound like Lagos to you? Does that sound like a city you know? Known for its religion and commerce. People say Nigeria is, is a seat of very strong religious adherence. People in Nigeria love, I don't want to say love God, are religious. True? We're very religious people, right? Are we beginning to feel like there's a semblance between us and the church at Ephesus? Mm. But the thing about the church at Ephesus is the religion in their day had to do with the worship of a goddess Diana. And so she had a temple, a huge temple, and she was the goddess of fertility, and they had priestesses and, and, and folks in the temple who would have sexual relations in the, past, in the temple without shame in, as part of their worship of this goddess. So it was a city with a lot of sexual immorality. And this church was planted in that city. Mm, you say, oh, no, no, we don't have sexual immorality in Nigeria. Hallelujah. Does it sound like our city, folks? Mm, I think it does. This church was strong. This church was vibrant. This church was founded on the word. This church was, a, was um, a group of people who loved God, who served God, who started out on the right doctrine. For how many years? About 12 years and more. They were standing Despite the persecution, despite the environment, the church was thriving. And then about AD 96, which is about the time that John wrote this book, this church was beginning to wither. Mm, they became shaky. Jesus Plus had entered the church. I was listening to, um, I watched a video of a, a pastor in South Africa, I don't recall his name now, who used to um, perform fake miracles and who used to use um, charms and all of that to, you know, not only perform miracles but deceive people. And you know what he said? He said he came to Nigeria to get some of his powers. Oh. <laughs> ah. So the church became compromised in the days of Apostle John, when this letter was written, they had become compromised a little bit. They were beginning to wither. And then a few years after, by 200 AD, this church was there. So I don't know if this meant that they got this letter and acted on it, but eventually fell away. Or maybe they received the letter and did nothing about it. 
So my first question to us this morning, you have a letter from Jesus. Are you going to act on it? Unfortunately, the efficient church died. That's not going to be your story. I cannot hear you. That's not going to be your story. You will run your race. You will end well. In the name of Jesus, you will finish strong. If that's you, lift your hand and say amen. Let's go through the letter that Jesus sent to them. We read it already. The first thing he said is, I know your works. I know your works. Hello, you can hide it from man, you can hide it from, God, uh, from, from woman, but you cannot hide it from God. He says, I know your works, I see you. There's no pretending before me. <laughs> I know your works. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, there is no creature that is hidden from his sight. Look, don't deceive yourself. You can deceive man, you cannot deceive God. The Bible says, man looks at the outward appearance. Where does God look? You know, growing up, because I was in Sunday school and all of that, I, I, I used to picture the eye of God being one big, huge eye in the sky, looking at me and watching and seeing whatever I was doing. Do you have a God consciousness? Do you understand that he sees you? Even when we cannot, do you understand that he sees you not only on Sunday when you look very Christian, but he sees you on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, when you go to your meetings, when you're closing that business deal, when you're having a conversation with your spouse, whatever it is that you're doing, that he sees you. So the first thing he says is, hello, announcement. I know your works. I know your every thought. I see your every action. The things you think are hidden are plain before me. Mm. Can you declare this morning, the Lord knows my every thought? Oh, are you afraid to say it? It is true whether you say it or not. The Lord knows my every thought. The Lord hears my every word. The Lord sees my every action. I will give accounts to him. Oh, that one was quite low. I will give accounts to him. Mm. You need to understand that. Let it sink into you. Sometimes I think we forget that there's a God to whom we must render account. <laughs> oh, I'm very old school. There's a song coming to my mind now. Where's Adrian? Okay, not close. Do you know that song? On that day, he's coming. Do you know it? Only old school people know that song. <laughs> All men shall stand. If you know it, sing it. Wow. Different versions. Let's clap for the Inspire Mass Choir. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will give account. We will give account. Let's continue with the letter. Jesus speaking to the church. He said, look, church at Ephesus, there are so many good things about you. And you know, I love this book. I love this particular letter. Because there's a balance. There's a balance. Jesus started out with, hey, I know your works. I see the good that you're doing. So they got a pat on the back. And that's for someone here who thinks, I'm just working, I'm just serving, nobody sees it. Hello. He says, I know. I see it. What was the first thing? I see how you've labored for my name's sake. I see your labor, your hard work. I see your sacrifice. I see that you're holding the work. I see that you're serving. I see that you're persecuted. I see your labor. It's not convenient yet you show up. I see your labor. And that's a word to someone today. God says, I see your labor. Mm. I see that you have persevered. You're patient. You're patient through persecution, through the tough times, through the, the difficult times. You're patient. 
You've not jumped out of the boat. I see you, says Jesus. You have no tolerance for evil. Not just that you're not doing it. You don't allow it happen around you. He says, I see you. You hate false teaching and false doctrine. I see you. Your faith is founded on the word. The pure word of God. I see you. You're not moved by the, those who perform miracles and those who show up with signs and wonders. You're seeking the word. You're seeking the truth of God's word. I see you. He says to the church at Ephesus, great job, guys. Pat on the back, guys. These you have done well. And you know, when I read this, I thought this is a perfect church. If only we can even get to this, wouldn't it be a good thing? Hello? When you look at this list, if you had to score yourself, okay, no, don't score yourself. If you had to score your neighbor against these four dimensions, do they measure up to the church at Ephesus? Mm. This church wasn't doing badly. They loved the Lord. They, they feared the Lord. They walked, they served. They did a lot of great things. Now, what did Jesus say to them? I have a complaint. <laughs> you have left your first love. You don't love me in the NLT. He says, my complaint is, you don't love me or each other as you did at first. You have left your first love. People look at you and they say, ah, this guy is... Uh, is Jim Jim. But Jesus is looking at you and saying, really? I know what you're capable of. You're not even close. Mm. I've seen you serve. You're not even close. You're getting cold. You know, backsliding doesn't happen all at once. It starts gradually. 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 Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 24. Verse 12, he said, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will what? Grow cold. When you put a cup of hot water in the fridge or in the freezer, it takes a while for it to freeze. First, that temperature has to drop. It's a gradual process. And Jesus was speaking to them and said, look, yeah, you still, you still look good today, but your love, your passion is gone. You have left your first love. And what does that mean for us today? I have a few quick pointers that I put in there. Your first love, when obedience to God is burdensome. When it becomes a burden to obey God. <laughs> when evangelism is no longer your priority. Once upon a time, you would stop someone and have a conversation about Jesus. You would share your faith wherever you went. But right now, perhaps it's no longer a priority. Are you in church? Talking about your first love. This, this is Jesus' letter to us today. Prayer is a struggle. You used to pray. You used to love to pray. Hmm. Bible study is onerous. It's hard. Pastor B, it's hard. It's not easy. I don't like King James Version. Okay, use New Living Translation. It's not quite the same. Oh yeah, use the message. Ah, the message is too contemporary. It's not quite. And we look for excuses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Giving to God's work has become discretionary. You do it you know, at your own discretion. You come to church, you're calling for offerings. Mm. <laughs> oh, don't we love Jesus? Fellowship has to be convenient. It has to be convenient. <laughs> it has to be convenient. The, the SEs have to be working. Otherwise, really, I can't sit in church. It's, it's not comfortable enough. 
Oh, Lord. I, I grew up at a time where we used to have services on their shed. When sometimes we get beaten by rain, the cross before me, it rained this morning. Some people couldn't make it to church because it rained. The world behind me, where's your passion? Where's your passion? You're too busy to serve. Too busy. Say, ah, Pastor B, my job is very demanding. So is mine. <laughs> too busy to serve. You have an excuse all the time. There's a reason why you can't show up. There's a reason why you can't serve. There's a reason why you can't contribute. There's a reason why. And Jesus is reminding you today, I know your works. I know what you're capable of. And I see where you are. Mm. Too busy. You have an unteachable spirit. I've met some Christians. Once you give the text, they're like, I know that scripture. <laughs> unteachable spirit. You know it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing the Holy Spirit can, can show you or teach you anymore. See, I've read the Bible back to back three times, four times. I mean, I know it. Who's, who's preaching next week? Who's preaching next week? Uh, that person, okay. I'm not coming to church. <laughs> An unteachable spirit. He says, you have left your first love. This hits home for me. I don't know about you. I don't know what your story is. This hits home for me. Because as Jim Jim, as you might think I am today, you know what Jim Jim is? As on fire as you might think I am today, I look at where I'm coming from and I wonder. I look at my story and I wonder, blessing, are you slacking off? Because as young as 16, 17, we were taking territories. Oh. We were going on outreaches. I remember in secondary school, SS2, we became um, Fellowship Esco. And some people said there, were, there was Madame Koiko, it was a girl's school. Madame Koiko in our school. Have you ever heard those stories? Every school, eh? Okay. Do they still have them now? It was our generation. And, and, and really, you know, girls were afraid. They were terrified. We were 16-year-olds, and we had just become the escorts in the fellowship. We had a seven-day fast. The last day was two days nonstop. When we finished the escort, we went into the hostel when the rest of the students were in class. And we went from class to class, from room to room. Some of us would kneel and put our hands on the floor. Some are holding a bunk. Some, and we spoke in tongues throughout the school. And we said, Lord, as long as we are in this school, it cannot happen. We take this 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. I remember one time my principal called me. And she said, she was he hearing about some things going on in the school. And she said, blessing, my maiden name is Obayoje. She said, Obayoje, you are in this school and this is happening. I was 17. I don't know what your story is, but when Jesus says to me, remember your first love, it hits deep because I know where he got me from. I know where he picked me up from. <laughs> uh, I don't know what your story is. Maybe you gave your life to Christ. Maybe on campus you were on fire. And you look at yourself and wonder, am I getting cold? Maybe there was a time in your life you were on fire for God. You, you could pray, you could teach. And now you come, you sit in the congregation. And you're not putting the gift of God in your life to use. The anointing released on you to use. Remember your first love. Mm. Remember your first love. When you gave your life to Christ. When you started on this journey versus today. How are you doing? How are you doing? Is it very difficult to fast now? 
Oh, makalido sayabatayada. Is it very difficult to fast now? Is it very difficult to give to the work now? Is it very difficult to show up in church now? <laughs> Is it very difficult to serve on the worship team, on the ushering team? You take offense. They said this to me. They said this about me. Is that where you're preaching now? The Lord says to you, remember your first love. Remember. Remember who you are. I remember the first time I watched Lion King several years ago. I heard the Lord speaking to me when Mufasa said to his son, or the, the image of Mufasa said to his son, you are more than you have, what you have become. And it was a movie, but I heard the Lord saying to me, you are more than what you have become. And maybe there's someone in the house today. He's saying to you, you are more than what you have become. I put too much in you for you to sit down and do nothing with it. There's a grace upon your life. It's too much. I've invested too much in you for you to sit and do nothing with it. Remember who you are. Remember where I pulled you. Remember. Remember. Oh, Makalado Satire. It's time to go back. It's time to go back. It's time to turn back and do the works you did at first. It's time to go back to the place of koinonia. The place of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's time to go back to that place. It's time to go back to that place. You've been sleeping for too long. You've been slacking off for too long. And maybe you're not totally out. So he says, hey, efficient church, there are so many good things you're doing, but your first love isn't where you are anymore. Your passion, your zeal for the Lord is gone. You're just going through the emotions. It's time to go back to the place of intimacy with the Lord. Oh, glory to Jesus. It's time to enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And if you've never been there, it's time to go there. Where you sit and you worship and you can hear the Lord and he's giving you instructions. Where you enjoy the presence of God. You're not showing up in church to check the box. But there's a deep passion in your heart for fellowship, for worship, for his presence, for his altar, for the kingdom. It's time to go back there. It's time to go back to the Great Commission. Where you see someone and the first thing that comes to your heart is, where is he going to spend eternity, my friend, my family member? Jesus says, if you don't go back there, I will remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, the lampstand re represents the church. Represents the church. If you don't repent and go back there, I will remove your lampstand, meaning you will no longer be relevant as a church. That's not going to be our story. That's not going to be our story. Mm, 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 mm. If, if you allow your love for God, your passion for God, your commitment to the kingdom to wane, over time you lose your relevance. <laughs> it says, if you do not worship me, I will do what? Raise stones. <laughs> if he has poured into you, if he has reached out to you, if he has laid a mantle on you, and you let it go, let it slip. Guess what? He will raise stones and you lose your relevance. That's not going to be your testimony. Lift your hand and say amen. amen. So today is a great day. Now that we have this letter from the Lord. It's time to repent. It's time to repent. It's time to go back to Bethel. You know Bethel? Bethel. That was the place of meeting for um, Jacob. It's time to go back to the place of your covenant with God. The place of your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's time to go back there. 
It's time to go back to the place of your passion. Passion and commitment. When the world wonders why, we just tell them we're loving our king. I saw a post by Mike Bamiloye. You know Mike Bamiloye, Mount Zion? I saw, I saw a post that he put out this week. He said, some years ago, God told them they had only one evangelism boss, BS, and God told them to give it to another ministry. And then they began to use public transport. It was on that day that he realized that they are not normal, according to him. He said, I realized that we are not normal. You cannot be walking in obedience to God and be normal. You cannot be regular. And I read it, it hits me. How can God say to you, give, and it's evangelism boss. <laughs> it's not a personal, give your evangelism boss to that ministry. And then you walk or join public transport to do the work of the ministry. He said they obeyed God, but that day he realized that he's not normal. The cross before me. <laughs> the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. We need to wrap up. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. To him who overcomes, I will give to each from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Please rise up. I just want you to lift your hand to God. If he spoke to you today and declare, Lord, today I renew my love for you. You know, some couples do that. They say it's, it's marriage renewal and they renew their vows. Today I renew my love for you. I rededicate myself to you and to the kingdom of God. I declare that you are my priority. <laughs> I declare that your passion is my passion. Your mission is my mission. I will obey you. I will follow you. I will serve you. I will set my mind on you. No more distractions. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I am totally devoted and committed to you. If that's your prayer, lift your hand to him and let him hear your voice today. Remember your first love. And maybe there's someone who says, well, it's, I'm just joining the family of God today. I'm just coming in today. I want to experience this love of God. I want to experience this passion in him. If you're that person, I'm praying with you right now. Please put your hand up. Let's pray together. If you're online, please just give us your details. We'll, we'll send you the instructions online to give us your details so that we can, we can support you in your journey. Lord, everyone lifting their hands to you and saying, I'm giving myself to you today totally. No more pretense. No more distractions. I'm coming to you just as I am. I pray, Lord, that you receive them. And I pray, Lord, that you draw them close to yourself. In the name of Jesus. Everyone else, please say this declaration after me. Lord, today, I renew my love for you. I, rede I rededicate myself to you and to the kingdom. I declare that you are my priority. Your passion is my passion. Your mission is my mission. I will obey you. I will follow you. I will serve you. I will set my mind on you. No more distractions. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. 
I am totally devoted and totally committed to you in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. Hallelujah.